All right. Sounds good. Are we good? All righty. Welcome back to the Son of a Boy Dad podcast. Look at us. Live from HQ3 in our new fancy studio. Uh, they al- already took away our table privileges because of our nasty feet last <laughs> yeah, day. I didn't even realize we don't have a table. <laughs> <laughs> so that sounds a little bit hot on the mic, I'll be honest, in my headphones, but maybe that's just a me problem. But yeah, Sounds they like took- a you problem. <laughs> oh, fuck. All right. Still up. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, they took away our table immediately. We we lost our table privileges, but we were, f- I mean, I'd, we didn't we didn't know that it was just going to oh, be. Oh, it looks like Diego took our table. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what the fuck? <laughs> Diego. Someone come had on, to man. someone had to use the piano. I honestly thought they brought the piano in for you, Francis. I saw that and I thought, what are you expecting of me? It would be cool. Play us a song, piano man. Here's something that just happened. Sass and I confronted Dave, didn't confront him. We consulted him. <laughs> and consoled him. I had a question about son of a boy dad. And Dave looked at me and he goes, what are you doing with them? Yeah, that did happen. He had no idea that I have been a part of this show for a bit. Which and is shocking because usually he's like a big listener. That's right. That makes me think he's probably catching up on the old the classics. He's running he's back the hits in the, right now. deep in the library. Yeah. And it was too bad for me because I was very much planning on pointing to my uh, inclusion in this show as a, as a reason for... A precipitous raise. Not even a raise, just keep keeping me keeping me here, keeping <laughs> me on. A precipitous non-fire. And stuff to point to a credit when he's not aware that you have it. The only way to negotiate is to be able to list things you do until he's like, all right, stop talking. And so you having this as one of your things that you list. I would have to talk list. real slow. <laughs> <laughs> you have to spell it out. <laughs> You'd have to spell Song. it out in Morse code. <laughs> I'm not sure if you're aware, but our show is... <laughs> dot, o- dash, dot, 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 dash. <laughs> yeah, that would be, be tough. Laughs. Yeah, it's fucking tons That's of laughs. Jokes. That's jokes. So what did uh, Portnoy say? He almost didn't believe me. Almost was ready to tell me, don't, don't do that. It Don't was a look of the shock show. in his eye when we both approached him. Mostly, I feel like it was mostly coming from me being in the conversation as well. He was looking at you. He's like, hey, Francis. And then I said to Sass, <laughs> I said to Sass, I was like, we should talk. To, we should ask Dave this question. And Sass was like, ah. <sighs> Yeah, I don't know why you're scared to talk to him again. Like you're locked in with your contract. And uh, we're just two guys. We don't like to bash heads too often. You mean we like, cut, we talk? Like to, we, like to, we like to talk to each other like once every couple of years. Bashing heads sounds like chimpanzees making out. Like you're totally. not fucking. Ba- you're you're just fucking talking to each other. You signed your contract. It's fucking bare minimum. That's the two words on the contract. Truth, bare minimum. Yeah, signed, signed sealed, sealed, delivered. I went to the doctor today. Holy for the first time in years. Holy fuck! That was pretty weak. <laughs> what's weak about that i don't know i'm just trying to do to you what you do to me which is that you start telling a story and then you immediately call it gay <laughs> all right wait but well, listen this this was crazy so i i get i actually the- went to the doctor before francis <laughs> <laughs> i've been to the doctor tell us about it expand on that and then let's not circle back so i went to the doctor i checked in doctor what were they checking your asshole no, for, uh, for cum. Borderline. They checked every single part of my body. They didn't check my nuts, though, which I was worried that they were going to do. And then also I had to pee in a cup and I couldn't pee. Nothing? And then I came out and I, guys, I was like, guys, I, I came in hot. I was planning it out in the bathroom, what I was going to say. And I was going to be like, I, uh, I just like haven't drank any water. Today. I came in and I was just like, I can't go. <laughs> that, was, that was the first thing that I said. I said, I can't go. That was nothing in me. And the guy was like, oh, there's water over there. And then I drank three big glasses of water. And then went back into the bathroom and just still couldn't pee. And then I and they were like, you can come back another time to pee. And I was like, that's never going to happen. But I got all the blood work and stuff done. But so I, I, got, I walk in and there's two ladies sitting like behind the desk. And then I'm like, hi, I'm here. I'm checking in for an appointment. And they're like, oh, talk to the, uh, to the person right here. And they point at this massive screen, like probably bigger than that. And it's just a person on Zoom. Well, that one's not very big. It is when you're in a doctor's appointment and it's it's just right there. So I had to stand next to the TV and talk to a lady over Zoom, even though there was two people in person there. Yes, because dude, they've been uh, no, outsourcing wait, I got, I took shit. a picture of it. Was she the head honcho? Dude, it was just really weird and uncomfortable. Look at this. 
It was the doctor or like a... This was the secretary. Yes, they've been... And I had to, was I she, had is to she in Korea? Is she Korean? Is she Asian? I don't, I don't know. I had to stand there and talk to her. That screen's not bigger than that one. While there was two people. While there was two people in person there just doing nothing. And they were just passing her off to the robot lady. Telehealth. Telehealth, is that what it is? is that well, what telehealth is, was when you would not even go in at all. It's bizarre to take a telehealth appointment from within the doctor's office. Oh, I didn't. That wasn't where my whole appointment was. It's like going to the airport to play like a flight simulator game. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't the. I didn't do the whole appointment sitting like there. A, that it, would be crazy. A disc tray just like shoots <laughs> out for you to put your balls on. <laughs> tell, <laughs> cough. <laughs> is that, that was a real thing, telehealth? Yeah, that's what happened in COVID. Everything was telehealth. You were having oh, yeah, like yeah. doctor's appointments on Zoom and stuff. Yeah. Just sending in your symptoms, whatever. That would be nuts. No, I didn't have to do that. I had to get an EKG though, which I'd never done. Yeah. Very easy. Easy. I expected it to be like a long process. The no. longest process is when they put the stickers on you. What stickers? The things that are collect connected to the wires. Yeah. You ever oh, had one of those? The pads EKG? or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know why you said it's like them running tests on you was easy. You expected it to be hard? Yeah. An EKG, I mean, I've seen photos of them. I imagine that would be like a two-hour process. It was three seconds. So what was it? They just put some pads on you and it measured your heart rate or some shit? Something like that, yeah. Things have come a, a long way stuff. since the last time you went to the doctor. It office. seems that way, yeah. yeah. Well, it kind of made me realize how little my doctor was doing. Because I didn't do, we didn't, we did a lot more stuff than my doctor did. Mm. My physicals when I was a kid would just be like, weigh yourself and look in your ears. And this was like, I had to get blood drawn. I had to piss, EKG. <laughs> they were telling me I might have to go on cholesterol medicine though. At a young I'm age. on that. Uh, statins? Statin. I don't know what it is. That, I'm on a statin. Know, You're really? going to be on a, that's what they'll put you on. I, I don't have high cholesterol. At least they don't know yet. Uh, but it was just because of my family history. You definitely do. Yeah. Damn, I I also have a little bit high cholesterol, if I do say really? so myself. What if the boys, all of us just on statins? The Staten Island right That'd here. Be huge. Yeah, just chopping yeah. up some fat lines of statins and yeah. fucking getting absolutely twisted. That would be huge. I like my statin. It makes me feel better about eating red meat. Really? They said that it was one of the best medical inventions of the last 40 years. I could see that. And that it is such an, such an effective medication that they should put it in the water. Really? Yeah, which sounded a little 1984. Yeah, that seems a little... Yeah, they said that about fluoride and microplastics too. And yeah. suddenly we eat a credit card with every meal. Yeah. I like my water without statin. Thank you. I think that... Uh, I wouldn't it, hate it. Uh, I'm going to take it regardless. Yeah. Joe Rogan was talking about uh, Anthony Bourdain saying that he needed a statin. And Rogan was like, you don't fucking need that. Like, just train Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And he said it completely changed Bourdain's life and his body. And he never needed the statin. So maybe you <laughs> just right. need to train <laughs> BJJ, bro. I don't know if Bra Brazilian jiu-jitsu is sort of the... Catch-all for cholesterol. Yeah, I don't know if it's the, the panacea <laughs> you for... You fight it away. <laughs> for you high cholesterol. choke out the cholesterol. Rear naked choke it out of your Triple body. Triple bypass or <laughs> Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Jitsu. What they're going to tell you, by the way, Sasquatch, is that your cholesterol is borderline troublesome, but that rather the issue is you have this sticky lipid protein. That's Ooh. what they're going to tell you. And that that is not going to be able, you can't, no matter what you do, that's not going to change. Okay. And so the statin will help prevent that from sticking all the fatty foods and stuff, red meats. Yeah, last time I went to a doctor, they said like, "Well, we'll assess it when you come back, and but you might have to go on a statin or something like that because it's like dangerously high or whatever." I just didn't go back. Mm. I just never dug back into it. Well, I stopped I'm hoping that none of these happen. Eat more eggs now. Do you think that's going to happen to me? I'm pretty young. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Also, the younger you start, the later you can quit. True. Do you ever quit? <laughs> I just said something that sounded correct. I'm trying to get off statin right now. I wanted to find a way to <laughs> land the like plane. Methadone. You get off of it. Jersey Jerry used to be on statin. Yeah. <laughs> he was in fucking was dumpster diving. Statin in Phoenix. <laughs> Sucking cock for statin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get off these statins. <laughs> it's fucking ruining my life. Does it have any effect? Like mentally or anything don't, like don't they say there's some like uh the body pain like you can be a side effect achiness overall especially after you lift weights so you're in no risk <laughs> i dude i lifted yesterday i was actually yesterday was a scary gym session i was worried about what i was doing <laughs> to my body 
because I've never thrown around the iron like that that aggressive. I haven't thrown I haven't thrown the iron around like that in so long. What were you doing? Everything, full body. My whole body sore right now. Tell us the whole circuit Spe- and the way, especially my ass. My ass is fucking screaming right now. Mm, damn. Yeah. You busting it open for some statins? Yeah, I did. Uh, I did squats. I did deadlifts. Are you doing squats under a full bar, just free bar squat? So rack? I did. Uh, <laughs> I did leg presses and I did dumbbell deadlifts. So I did not do squats or deadlifts. <laughs> <laughs> Just lying. For no benefit and to only correct yourself it's seconds later. It's easier to be like, well, I'd rather be like, yeah, I did squats than be like, I did the leg press. Yeah, but you could, you like the leg press because it's, it's, you can sit down, basically. <laughs> no, I'm you just doing it on your phone. I'm, you can I'm, be, play video games. No, I'm currently doing like a workout to get back into lifting. And that's like what the recommendation was. Oh. Okay. How, yeah. what, what was the load like? Heavy. 225? I had to throw the extra, du- I had to throw like dumbbells and, and plates on top of the leg press <laughs> to get it heavier. Yes, Just have that's... two little girls hanging on the side. Yeah. Wait a minute. You put more weight on top of it to make it heavier? I was using not one of the real leg presses, one of the ones that you just... Oh, I see. The machine. Excuse me. That's fine. Yes. Yeah. We don't have one of those cool ones at my gym. Where do you work out? Temple. He worships and works out. Yeah. One stop shop gets him right. What else did you do? What you? What else did you do in the uh... curls? I mean, I demolished the arms. Abuse, borderline abuse, what self kind of, abuse. What kind of curls are we talking? I had to told the doctor I was on Zoloft today, and she was like, "Do you ever hurt yourself?" And I was like, "Depends on what you mean by hurt yourself." Depends on the load. What went into the gym? What, what was going on in the gym Depends yesterday on was how borderline self harm. Workout I drink. <laughs> <laughs> Um, now it's, it was pretty easy, but it was, felt good. Felt good to get back in there mm. third time in the last week. So nice, dude, whatever. Ron and I have been on a workout kick. I heard. Yeah. We've been hitting it, hitting it hard. Yeah. I've been every day since I saw you in there. That's impressive. I, I can't quit because I, now I know Sass is coming for the crown. Yeah. I took today off, but, uh, I'm, I gotta get back to it. You're not going to go later? No, I can't. Or you really, got shit all day. I have, I have to wait until shows later. Yeah. Uh-huh. I see me. I, I would find the time. That's because you have the time. <laughs> I always find a way to make you, the time. Your job description is one one hundredth <laughs> of mine, dude. They should add weights. I was talking to Joe at the stand last night. Tell him they should throw like a bench press down there or something. Yeah, or something to keep me busy. Fucking Lewis would come down and like <laughs> cover it with weed. Or something. Just, somebody would immediately like grease it up and yeah. fuck someone's butt with it for like a legion of skanks bit. Let's see which They'd be dumbbell like shoving we can fit up Jay's ass. Up people's ass. Yeah. yeah. I was there when they put the gun up Big Jay's ass. They've done that a bunch though. The one that has Oh, like then flag. it's cool. I don't know. I thought it was a like it was a I think regular they, size pistol. Yeah. And it shoots something out of it, right? Like a flag, I think. I don't think they did that. They just shoved, they lubed it up and they shoved it. No, they shoved it. Yeah, they shoved it up Jay's ass. Yeah. In his in his ass? Wait, keep talking. And then Tess. someone wiped Ari's face with it. Ooh. And Ari was not happy. And I, I was like, I wouldn't want to get face fucked. These are my heroes. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't want to get fucking gun ass in my yeah. face. Why do they, uh, it's because it's they're straight, right? That they do all that? Yes. It's because they're so straight that it's like... Uh, well, there's a whole market for that kind of stuff. Yeah. On grinder. <laughs> I don't hate a little ass play. Yeah? I think that shit's hilarious. You know who else does it? Kanye West. Is that right? Really? Amber... Uh, what's her name? Amber Heard? No, no. Amber Rose tweeted about it. She was like, you still like it? you still getting your ass played with or some shit like that? <laughs> Amber Rose used to date him and uh, I guess he liked a little finger pop. That doesn't mm. surprise me. I guess he liked to get plugged up. I could see Kanye West getting a full fist in his ass. Oh, yeah. I could see him getting like uh, like the team when they all stack their hands on top of each other <laughs> up his ass. <laughs> like they're picking a croquet color. Yeah, exactly. Green, like the stack blue, of the baseball yellow, bat. red. Oh, the black <laughs> ball. Do you think when he was writing that lyric about like, if I get bleached on my t-shirt, it was from the third person? <laughs> <laughs> it was him getting fucked <laughs> <laughs> yeah just a meta exercise but i mean I, I bet with kanye once you get once you get your ass popped you can't go back 
like especially because everything's available to him it's not like he's gonna go more vanilla with his lifestyle no. after he's had amber heard fucking putting a blooming onion up his ass no i mean i guess that getting a finger in the ass is definitely a gateway to some way more freaky shit yeah do you think that that's how guys just turn gay is they they just start as straight guys then get finger popped a little bit and then wind up in full-blown gays I mean, if your first sexual experience is you getting a finger in your ass, you're probably getting a finger in your ass for the rest of your life. <laughs> I've just been lucky enough to not have a finger in my ass. <laughs> See, like I would never shame someone for that because it's really just how you're raised. Yeah, it's the environments that you stumble into yeah. from time to time. They got to sell butt guards though for, for guys like us who want to yeah. keep, keep our asses protected. They, it's called a butt plug. And they exist. <laughs> yeah. You put you put something no else in your ass. In my ass. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I got a plug up there. <laughs> no, I don't want right. anything inside my ass. Except no, for this. thank you. Good luck I getting... do not like anything <laughs> up my ass. Good luck getting past this twelve inch fucking butt plug I got in my ass right now. <laughs> it's, it's orange. It's carrot size. <laughs> so looks like a carrot. Those dainty little fingers of yours. That old green stem <laughs> to pull it out. Those soft little fingers. So they didn't they didn't touch because uh, it sounds like you kind of had an old man. Uh, physical today no oh 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 i thought you meant like my doctor was an old man no like your physical was that that they give an old man they're checking for your statins doing your blood work well it's because i told them that my dad has heart disease and my grandfather has heart disease damn you're really fucking spilling all i did spill i went to the doctor and i told the truth did you tell them that whole story about the hockey thing too what hockey thing? Like when you would ride home from games? <laughs> no, but they would have loved to know that. T- towards the end, he would say, so how do you think you played? They would definitely like to know that. They were asking, as soon as you tell them you're on Zoloft, they're like, you're not going to kill yourself, right? Freak. That's what they like. like they get. They really pry once you tell them you take antidepressants. That's what they. Were, that's why they were asking if you hurt yourself? Yeah, dude. It, it's I, I, like as soon as you say that, they, they just like turn the page over to a whole new list of questions. Right freak psychopath that's the fucking <laughs> the new paper to fill out it says here you played hockey <laughs> yeah how Let's did your about dad that. feel about your ability <laughs> yeah dude they were asking me like if i needed a therapist recommendation i was like no i was like i'm coming to you guys just to get more zoloft and why can't they just give you the zoloft what's the they name? did oh you got the zoloft but I, I also had to get a physical in order your to do that general practitioner prescribes your zoloft for you yes interesting well i, I don't have a psychiatrist yeah, I would have thought you needed a psychiatrist for that. You can get a, a therapist can't prescribe you medicine, but a psychiatrist and a doctor can. Yeah, I know that. So you have a psychiatrist in tandem with. No, I don't have a psychiatrist. But okay, that's my crazy point. I just right didn't now. know that. I didn't know a GP could do that. Huh? Your mic is? It also. Yeah. It also is fine because we're recording this separately as well. Okay, I'm just worried. Yeah, whatever. Um, the Rumble fellas will be okay. No, I can't, we can't get our guys on Rumble pissed <laughs> off. That's our new most most important audience. We I need them. Breathe, Rumble. Um, no, I lost you completely. My psychiatrist. Uh, Do you have a psychiatrist? Me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Whom I see though for therapy. Oh. But I like to know that she has an MD. She. Yeah. She's got an MD PhD. God damn. I want the most degreed person coping with my head. How how old is she? Can I ask? Probably 55. Jesus Christ. I like her. She's multilingual, uh, which means a lot to me. And she <laughs> prescribes me Xanax. For flights or for all, yeah. at, uh, at all times? Well, for flights. And then I'm very careful about it because I like it so much. I know. That's the problem with all the over the, or like the pharmaceuticals that they, they're all so damn good. Penzo's man. That Zanny, Zanny. Oof. How hard is it for you to get them? Well, the problem is, is that she gets me a lot. And so I have to be very reasonable about when I ask her for another batch. Yes. You have to exercise your own discretion. Hey, bad news. I was walking through the park and a bunch of pigeons attacked me. Yeah. Turns out they love Xanax. So the 60s that you 60 that you gave me, gone. You get 60? It's the last time I, I got 60 last time. And how long are they supposed to last? How, I don't know. I mean, I haven't like I year. haven't taken I haven't taken any. This is the problem. My met my best bet for getting more is to tell her that I they've all expired. Or just be like, I've been taking them because I have a lot of anxiety, and then she, she'll give you more. I told her that I only take them for flights, which is true. You fly a lot. Yes, but 
I think I told her for overnight flights. Uh, I was going to say, do you get anxious on planes? No, but I like to sleep on overnight flights and I can't unless yeah. I've taken Xanax. Xanax, yeah. Unless I have the strongest drug imaginable to zombie yeah. the fuck out. Yeah. medically put down. Someone punches me in the face. Yeah. Just go to sleep, bitch. They are fucking... Oh, man. They are delicious. And it's such a problem because you drink a little bit with them and then you fucking... Oh, no. I don't like that see at you, all. See you in Paris. I drank when, <laughs> when we went to... Minneapolis for that video that you did with the Vikings fans. Yeah. And I took Ativan before my flight and then I assumed it had worn off and then I had one beer and I had to go back up to my room because I was like uncontrollably like not even like fun fucked up just like feel like I feel sober like with my thoughts but I'm like so disoriented. Mm. Not a fun feeling for no, me. No, that's bad. That's bad. Are you going to take one before the company party? Hundred percent, yeah. I was gonna say, are you gonna drink at the company party? What do you think? You think I think the, yeah. I the, think the yes. two months of sobriety, I'm gonna break it for the company party. For Erica? No. For all that she's done for you? <laughs> no, I'm absolutely not drinking. I feel like she's kind of bent over backwards to make your career happen. I really don't know if I'll ever drink again. I don't think I'm going to. I think it's over. Okay, that's a lie. You keep saying it's a lie. You guys keep on being like, well, you're going to drink when you go home for the hall, and then I don't. And then you just extend it to, yeah, the company party is when I'm going to break the sobriety. It, dude, that's, it's what I've been, that's, what I've been, that's what I've been saving up for. It's reverse psychiatry. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> it is. Yeah. It's 100% reverse psychiatry, and then that's why you're now you're like trying harder and harder to not drink. I'm it has tri- tr- I promise you that when I'm thinking about drinking, the last thing I'm thinking about is you and Francis. <laughs> No, you're thinking being about... Like, being like, shit, they're going to make fun of me if I go back. No, it's not about us. It's about Erica. <laughs> no. <laughs> and the work she put in. It's about E. You think and E put in this Is Jerry going to smoke crack at the yeah. party? <laughs> <laughs> We're, I heard that they're going to have E for, for Erica. E. He's got to for Erica. Yeah, they're going to have bowls of ecstasy. He hasn't worked here as long as you have under her protection. I guess that's true. She's been sort of pulling the strings on a lot of your, like there were a lot of times I heard where Dave was like, I don't even understand his humor. (laughs) And then Eric would be like, well, it's not for us to get. No, Erica would not want me to drink. It'd be for the best that I don't. You think that when she comes up to you with a nice high noon and says, cheers, sass, and you're just going to pretend like you have one and air cheers it? No, I would say I'm not drinking. You know that we're going to get like a CEO that's, uh, either like Dolores Umbridge and this fucking toughest shit, or the biggest party boy of all time, who is actually going to make you drink. Like Dan, you know, I'm not going to let that happen. And when Dana Beers way. takes over, you're not going to be fucking. <laughs> I mean, either way, Dolores Umbridge, you're going to have to drink. Yeah, Dolores no. Umbridge will Dana put the Beers, crustaceous curse on you. You're going to want to drink. And Dana Beers will fucking pop that butt plug out and insert a funnel and have you boofing beers. Yeah, he's going to do the reverse Heimlich. <laughs> That's the only way you're getting alcohol into my body is if you're shoving it up my ass. <laughs> By the way... I, <laughs> which I'll do right now. Other than that, I'm not drinking. Just which a little I'll do Pink right Whitney now. High Noon or a Pink Whitney Nip yeah, bottle with the cap my off. Ass. No, dude, I'm going to... make you do a keg stand. <laughs> handstand. I'm going to be like the Joker in when uh, he's visiting Harvey Dent in the hospital and I'm going to like take off my mask as you're fucking at your next doctor visit and fucking shove Hi. a full 2-4 up your ass. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Oh, Rachel! I, I will say I did tell the doctor. I told her I don't drink. And then I had to go, well, that's not quite true. I said, I haven't drank. You couldn't even, you had to, you because you have to tell everyone? They ask if you drink. And you don't right and now. And do drugs. Did they actually ask or did you just walk right in and be like, no, they say, you do you drink there, or do I drugs? And I said, I use nicotine and I am not drinking right now. And I occasionally put a nip of high noon up my ass. And occasionally I'll boof a high noon here and there. <laughs> Boof a nooner. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm not sure what the medical term is for that. I shove it up my ass. Want to see me make this high noon disappear? <laughs> imagine <laughs> we just sit on. <laughs> imagine we line up Sass with his ass facing Rico, who throws perfect strikes, <laughs> yeah. like the Doctor Pepper, <laughs> just like a <laughs> like the Doctor Pepper halftime <laughs> show, <laughs> where they throw <laughs> the fucking touch of Doctor Pepper. Oh, the God. only way you're gonna get me to piss today is if you're shoving it up my ass. <laughs> <laughs> that would be hilarious. Do you pee that? Do you pee that out after you boof something, or does it come out of you? Just pee shit it out, it out? Your butt. You have to throw it up. Ugh. I think that's the only way. If you put something up your ass, but yeah, I wonder. Yeah, does it enter your uh, 
digestive system or how does it i would assume not one it, of the darkest youtube wormholes i ever went down was the steve-o backstory you ever watch sort of like the story of yeah, steve-o it's pretty terrible it's really dark why wow, what's so dark about well, one it? time but this was in when he was on jackass i mean he was they were all drinking Zanda. like crazy doing, doing drugs whippets. whippets like out of his mind oh my god and uh what he did as like a prank one time is he got an iv bag that he filled with vodka and so he was mainlining into his veins vodka how does that not kill you instantly? it's bad there's no stomach lining enzyme oh. there's nothing to break down the booze between your bloodstream and the vodka. Do you think Jackass could get made now? God, no. Probably not. That's cool, dude. <laughs> if it did, it would be like, hi, I'm a transgender. Uh, yeah, they need a girl to show their penis <laughs> too. And I, this is the, this is the they there challenge. And if there'd be like a DEI <laughs> cast of Jackass, yeah. which would be very funny if I'm honest. This is going to kill on Rumble. <laughs> <laughs> truly it will we probably just went up like ten thousand viewers yeah they're gonna instead of getting stung by ants they're gonna get stung by the woke mind virus <laughs> <laughs> oh man but on the most did you watch the most recent jackass video or movie I no. did. Yeah. They, they and they had they have a they uh, introduce a woman to the cast for I rachel mean, wolfson she's a comic Right, and that it's like, moon tower, right? and that's kind of why they're like, oh, we have a girl, we have a girl, and uh, yeah, they had a black, they had a black guy too. Yep. Oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> what the hell's happening to Jackass? <laughs> <laughs> oh, not a black dude. Black oh. dudes can't shove shit up their ass. <laughs> That's so funny for someone to be like genuinely mad about that. The fuck is this? What Dude, the, the hell happened to jackass? The corrosion of society. It's only funny when their dicks were small. <laughs> <laughs> they can't put a black guy in a shopping cart and shove him into the bushes. <laughs> Doesn't even make sense. The best jackass skit that I ever saw was the one where he's in the, uh, <laughs> when they're in the, when they play the prank on the other dude where it's like he gets in the taxi. And he's pretending to be like a terrorist. Yeah, that's the end of, I think, the first movie or the second movie. That yeah. was so fucking funny. It's really funny. good. And then yeah. they just reveal at the end that the beard is also made of all their pubes. Yeah, and he throws up. <laughs> One of them has fucking crabs. We used to watch that at sleepovers all the time. We just throw it on. Yeah. Also, the, the, the original Bad Grandpa with the long balls yeah. was so fucking funny. Yeah. That sophomore, bro. That shit was laughs. Nah, bro, that's fucking... That's fucking hack shit, bro. No, that's genius. Take some long balls up on stage, though, and see how it goes for you. Fucking. That would be funny. <laughs> it would be funny to just wear the long balls, but then just have pants on. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm the only one laughing. I'm like, you guys don't even know how funny this is right now. <laughs> In the corner while only everybody's you could dancing. See. Yeah. They don't know I have long balls on. They don't balls know I have the my... long balls on. <laughs> they don't know I'm recreating the long balls sketch from Jackass. <laughs> <laughs> Except no one can see it. Or going into the doctor's office, so it's just like <laughs> one guy, one guy that you're showing the long balls to. Long balls at the doctor's office would be hilarious. I would have to text you guys probably and be like, I can't come in. They're bringing me to the hospital. They think these things are real. <laughs> <laughs> They're too good. <laughs> these are movie quality long balls. That they, would be so funny just to do that for yourself. Like no cameras or anything. You just wear the long balls to the doctor's office just as like as a joke. And like uh make it as as realistic as possible yeah. just be like yeah like i don't know it's just has been this way since i was a little boy i haven't gotten a physical since i was like 16 my balls are just <laughs> like this now <laughs> it'd be damn respectable some guys probably have just long balls like that and doctors have to act like they don't i have long balls i've talked about it before oh yeah you always you're always like sitting on them or like getting them caught underneath no, your I, bike when tires pee, when i pee my pee can sometimes my piss sometimes hits my balls they're so long. That's like the classic <laughs> oh, what? small dick yeah. joke. Like your dick is so small, you pee on your balls. No, it is, but it's not. My dick is not that small. It's because my balls are that long. Oh, but that makes me nice. think that your balls are very outward and that your dick points really straight down. It's like a high That's lie exactly stick. What it is. <laughs> it's like a fucking curved <laughs> yeah, yeah. out. How does it? It's like a water slide. I, you are definitely right about the. My dick doesn't go straight down, but my balls definitely do go out. They, they come out. out? Yeah. You probably have a huge fucking sack. 
<laughs> I, I, I lie stick. I got an elephant. <laughs> uh, yeah. Do you what know what else? I lie? What? Do you know what high lie is? I do not. You fucking fool. They had they did that in Jackass, actually. Really? They would throw the I think it was oranges at them. What is it? Or maybe it was regular balls. It's that sport from like Malaysia. It's these type of sticks. Where they would throw them against a wall. <laughs> <laughs> they could throw them like a hundred miles an hour. Yeah, they just yeah, whip yeah. them. Yeah. Just yeah, using fucking balls. That shit flies. Yeah, yeah it does. But uh, I just don't know how your balls have, can be long enough to be droopy, but structured enough to come out. I don't know. I really don't know because sometimes, or maybe not your dick like goes into your like your dick goes into you your. I will say, when us? my penis is soft, it is extremely small, which is rare though because you stay hard. It is. I'm always at least half chubbed, but it is. It is. It's like it's pretty much mostly just head. Well, <laughs> what was it when you got pantsed in Vegas? The smallest a penis has ever been. Darn. Blackout drunk on stage. Yeah. Were, were they like, that guy's all balls? Yeah, dude, I, I saw the video. There's no sight of my penis in the video. It's all balls and pubes. But it's better than that guy who jumped into the fish tank at Bass Pro oh, Shops. Yeah. That's who didn't like a have any balls condition. at all. Yeah. That wasn't even like he, did, he didn't have, there was nothing there. No, no. balls, no penis, nothing. Yeah, that's that shit's fucking crazy that some guys are are going through life like that. But psychotic break penis has to be the smallest penis. I thought it could be really big and crazy. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> like no one's having a psychotic break with like a half boner. I guess some people probably No, I think are. that there's guys uh, I think it's like uh like you ever see a dude in the inner city with like just his like sweatpants falling off and his yeah. dick is fucking massive. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there was actually a dude that would be in the office a lot, or not in the office, but he would be down outside, and sometimes he would come into the lobby, who would always have his shirt off, and he would always have a big penis. Yes, yes. He would wear the gray sweatpants and no shirt, and he was always so bloated and like sweating, like Randy from fucking Trailer Park Boys. He probably drinks a lot of apple juice. Probably. That's gotta be it. He's just bloated down to the cock. (laughs) (laughs) I was, oh, uh, oh, fuck, man. I took the subway this morning. Yeah. And there was a really attractive woman on the subway. No. Really? And that kind of pissed me off. Yeah. It was probably like a publicity thing. I don't know what. It's probably like hashtag ad underneath yeah. it. She probably has an OnlyFans she's like, selling. I, I was like, I was like, what are you doing down here, sweetheart? Yeah, you should have said that. This isn't safe for Are these here. guys bothering you? No, but I, I wanted to be like, this isn't the place for you. I almost wanted to get her an Uber. Like I... <laughs> uh, Francis, you're going to end up on that old video. Of, remember that video of the girl walking down the street and just to show how many dudes would come up to her? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. be like, how's no, it going? Good looking. For her own protection, yeah. you know, but at the same time, like the subway has gotten really bad and, and I didn't used to subscribe to that, but I, I, we've talked about this. Like I, I would say that the frequency of of bogeys on the subway now is more than more than not yeah like i would say six to seven out of ten subway rides that i take on my own car you're getting come on. there's a bogey there's a bogey of some kind some somebody's kind gonna come bogey. on you for sure but and, is that just your because you've talked about this a lot is that just like what line do you take i take the two three but dude i i, I don't think it matters i really don't because the one is clean living I and mean, this is coming through lower manhattan this isn't like we're not out in Bushwick or East New York or any of that yeah. stuff. Um, Bushwick, ew. Yeah, but this the other day I saw a guy who who scooted on. Yeah, and by you know he had two hair nets over his feet. Those were what he was using, like those blue uh, scrub type yeah, yeah, hair yeah. nets, you know. Yeah, yeah. And they were those are his socks, and then um, <laughs> he was wearing sweatpants, but they came below his ass. Yeah. And then his ass was completely bare. Yep. And he was scooting feet first and dragging his butthole like a dog with worms across the floor of the subway. And then he had a pencil and he was signing the floor and the wall. He signed the map and he was sort of muttering to people. It was probably Banksy, honestly. Yeah. It sounds like a Banksy project or World of T shirts. He's always doing shit like that. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I couldn't help but think, you know, if that hot girl were on that subway, like, would have been a problem. Yeah, yeah. Do you think probably, those guys are enjoying themselves when they're doing that? I mean, it's got to be like the most fun thing. On he Earth. wasn't troubled at all. No, no, he wasn't that troubled. Maybe he just got a fresh grip of Zannies. Have you ever seen a cop deal? 
Oh, with any no, of these never, people? Never. No, dude. A cop, is it their job or not? If a cop if a cop gets filmed dealing with that guy, that cop is going viral for the wrong reason. Like the yeah. cop that people are going to be like, this cop's a fucking scumbag, dude. Let the guy write on the girl. Who whose job is it to help those people? I don't know, but I was I never really see, I never see like actual cops I don't in think the city. You, I don't think you ride the subway at all. No, I ride the subway like every day. No, the cops what? are always at they're yeah. like at just salad, eat like congregated by the window, like having yeah. a nice convo. But I was I mean like the cops that I see in New York are the cops that are like wearing a fucking uniform that's ten sizes too big for them. And they're like the traffic. They're Indian cops. guys. No, it's usually actually like women. Indian women. No. Really? Quite. I know what you're talking about. I used to see those women all the time when I would do alternate side parking. Yes. And they would have like a little Palm Pilot. They would take the license plate. We got to do a fucking ride along or something like that. I Just would like so we to can know, get some yeah. goddamn appreciation for the cops around here. Didn't didn't like a uh, cop overtime? Didn't they give out like thirteen billion dollars in cop overtime this year? Is that right? It probably isn't right at all, but I think they gave a ton of money to cop overtime. Well, that's where they make most of their money, isn't it? Doing overtime. But then everybody online was like, "Now the fucking libraries are shut down." Fucking great. It's like a post about the libraries having to close, and people were like, "Well, it was fucking thirteen billion dollars of cop overtime." Who's going to the library? I was going to say, I've never been to a library in New York City, and I've rarely seen police They're in New York City. They're better than you'd think. Well, there's that one that's really famous, oh, right? Yeah, the New York, New York Public York. Library. Yeah. The big one up by uh, Grand Central. Is that one still open? Yeah, that one's huge. What's yeah. going on in there? Uh, what's his name? Got married there. The Eric Kevin Adams. Love. Kevin Love got married there. Really? He got married at the New York Public Library. Nerd. To Hope something. Solo. No, it can't be. Kit. Kate Bach. Kate Bach. Kate Bach. LeBron went. Yes. Really? LeBron was there. Of course. They were old, old On the Cavs. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> then they went to South Africa for their honeymoon. They went to Rwanda and in you Tanzania. you borrowed your outfits from them. That's exactly yes. right. I knew that there was a yes. fucking... Oh, my God. That's the most high priority. Well, if you want to have a very private wedding, why are you having it in the middle of New York City? It's one of those like inside-outside privacy things. It's in like the, building a house in the Hamptons. The New York Public Library. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's got public in the God name. God forbid you need to study. <laughs> We're going to leave 20 of in Invitations open to people who need to come in from the cold. <laughs> for homeless guys who want to drag their asshole across the, <laughs> the red carpet. For, for avid crossworders <laughs> who stay till closing time. Like, who the fuck is taking a book out of the library? The New York Public Library. Who is getting Probably fucking students, war and peace? No. Students of what? I guess, I don't know. I guess, like, NYU probably has its own library. Yeah, Exactly. Fordham has their own library. Yeah. High schools have their own libraries. I don't know. I, I truly don't know. It's probably like 75-year-old Jewish guys who are lifelong New Yorkers who have like, it's tote bag people. Yeah. It's people who push shopping carts and have tote bags. Checking a book out of the library is a long lost pleasure. And part of it was that like renting a movie, you knew you had a time limit which forced you to finish the book on time. Yeah, that's Stick true. Stick to a schedule. Two week rental. Yeah. Bring it back. Or else you'll face a nickel. Yeah. <laughs> you'll have to come up with one nickel in penalties. That's so true. Or Dude, I remember having a library you book. own the fucking book. Yeah, I remember having a library book that was like five years overdue. And I brought it in. They were like, it's going to be a $3 charge. Because <laughs> at what point does it supersede the cost of the book? I think it takes a long time. Like, you'd have to die with the book in your casket. Yeah. You can also call and be like, hey, can I extend this rental? And they're like, yeah. Yeah, we don't care. We have, like, tons of books. Yeah, we got a lot of books. You're good. <laughs> Honestly, just take it. We didn't We didn't know. Yeah. Uh, what a boring lifestyle by fucking Dewey Decimal to fucking come up with a system of coding library books. I will say I did love returning a library book, though, because our library had this thing where you would, like, open it up and put your book in. It was a good feeling. Or a shoot. Uh, the shoot is nice. Shoots are nice. We've lost all shoots. We had a laundry shoot in my house as really? a kid. I was so jealous of people that had that. I'd yes. open it up, throw my wet pants down yeah. there. My pants were always wet. Yeah, and covered in blood. 
Yeah, I would. I would. Skull. I would go. What? Sorry. I'm talking about when you jumped you in the smashed pool. your head open. Oh, jumped yeah. in the lake. <laughs> I wasn't wearing pants. Help! <laughs> Bob! Bob! Before the EMT arrives, I want to use the chute one more time. Might <laughs> yeah. be my last. Yeah, because you're my last need a deep clean. Get me upstairs, mom. <laughs> Mom, Get they the say shoot. the quicker that you deal with a stain, the easier it is to get out. Get me my Tide pen. But aren't there houses now that have like, uh, am I thinking of trash vacuum shoots? Dumb I waiters? I of that Instagram video, the ad that keeps going, keeps coming up on my what feed is it? at least. What is it? And it's a laundry shoot that it's a vacuum. That I guess it must activate like once something gets close. Yes, and it's that's what I'm thinking. Videos of. of kids just being like, and it like sucks it in. Oh, yeah, I'd cool. definitely put my dick in that. <laughs> <laughs> no, your long ass balls would get caught in there. You'd have like two feet up on the wall trying to push off. <laughs> <laughs> Pulling, <laughs> you fuck scooting you across the floor. <laughs> ah, stop my it! Balls are in the basement at the laundry <laughs> <Yeah>. machine. <laughs> <laughs> your mom's in the basement as your balls keep on coming in and yeah. out of the fucking shoot. <laughs> she just turns up to Beyonce. Yeah. <laughs> pretends not to notice what's going on. You guys see that uh, Stephen A. Smith is trying to uh, yeah. debate Trump? <laughs> oh, no. I thought you were going to talk about his $20 million contract. Oh, that's one thing. With what? ESPN? Yeah, he's, he's asking for 20 mil a year. He said he could get 20 mil in the open market. I'm surprised he's not paid I, that. I think he can get 20 I mil think he gets 8 market. mil. I, I think he's our highest paid guy. I think he gets... I could be making this up just like I made up the $13 billion in police overtime, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think that he was, he he gets eight million and is ESPN's highest paid employee. Yeah, or maybe now that McAfee hey, probably I was say, is getting... how much does McAfee get? It's got to be a ton. Yeah, because hmm. well, isn't be McAfee getting... also getting? I I heard that they were gonna they're gonna do like a red zone for college football, but it's gonna be hosted by Pat McAfee. Really? Yeah, that That's could be just sick what I've too. Been hearing. That dude is. They, I think that there's a decent <laughs> chance that there's like a cloned version. Or it's like there's a it's a man in the iron mask situation with Pat McAfee, and there's two of him. Because of how prolific he is, he has a big worth work ethic. Yeah, it's crazy. But uh, Stephen A. Smith is like, I, I, I don't want to run for president, but I want to debate against Trump. I would one hundred. I mean, that would be. Like, I would be amazing kill to see that. It'd be yeah. amazing. It would be unbelievably. Because honestly, he might be the only one that could get him. Yeah. Like if he I don't was even the, know if you could get him, but it would just be equal, unmovable objects and forces. That would be unbelievably entertaining. Just I don't hit, think you can get under Trump's skin. But same with Stephen A. Smith, though. If they just did fir a first take episode with Trump and Stephen A. Smith, it would fucking yeah. rule, yeah. dude. Just two people talking without stopping the whole time. Yeah. Stephen A. Smith just unloading the fucking biggest <laughs> words you've ever heard. Yeah. <laughs> Stephen A. Smith, dude. His There's prolific equanimity. <laughs> <laughs> dude, his, the, the, the reacting to tweets thing that he's doing is so funny. Yeah, he rules. He's so fucking funny. Yeah. It'd be so much sweeter than that uh, Destiny Ben Shapiro debate. Oh, I didn't even watch that. I tried to watch it. I had to, I had to check out. Mm. I'm not a big Ben Shapiro guy. Or that might hurt the Rumble numbers. Fuck. But I'm not a big... <laughs> well, he's just not... He doesn't go hard enough. He's too much of a centrist is his fucking he's problem. He's too left. He's too left wing for me. Yeah. He's, he's a little apparently bit... a very good chess player. No, I get him confused me. with that other guy who's really smart. Tucker Carlson. Magnus Carlson. No, the guy who does jujitsu appears on Rogan a lot too. Quiet guy. He's got a big podcast. You just narrowed down every single person who's ever been on Joe. <laughs> not a comic. Not a comic. He's really smart. I think he's like a physicist. Uh, oh, oh, that's who's uh, that's oh, who's uh, Lex Friedman. Lex Friedman. Yeah. That's whose uh, podcast you went not on. Not who I was going to say. Boy, added two more details. We were right there. Lex Friedman yeah. is, uh, he like claims MIT. I'm pretty sure he just went to Drexel. <laughs> I'm almost positive. Like, I think my dad uh, taught him at Drexel. He's really? like, oh yeah, Alex Friedman. <laughs> he like changed his fucking name or something like that. <laughs> Alex Friedman. <laughs> Throw him off the scent. <laughs> I swear to God, I think his dad's like a professor at Drexel, or like his dad does something at Drexel and he like went to Drexel. Really? And he's just like MIT certified scientist. Hmm. Does I guess he's good at chess and just He's very good at chess. But he, I think he had Magnus Carlson on his fucking boring ass podcast. He's, he's like the king of the Magnus monotone. is the chess guy, right? Magnus yes. is amazing. Yeah. I watch Magnus highlights all the time. My How friends he shows are up super late. With him. Yeah. Yeah. And he's just he just doesn't give a fuck. Yeah. He's not like other chess players. He doesn't care. 
Yeah, he tries so hard to be like, I'm fucking the renegade of chess. I mean, it is the game starts before the game even starts, though. It's true. You get someone off their game, have them a little bit nervous. They're thinking about when are you going to show up. They're not thinking about Knight to Queen Six. Now, what what is the uh, what's the software that that beat Magnus? Deeper. It's like the expert mode on. Well, I remember. I remember when Kasparov was playing the computer. I think it was Deep Blue or something they called yeah. it. It was like. The, you know, and everyone knew the statistics. It memorized the 400 million move combinations in one second. Yeah. It's like, well. It's a computer. And then he won and everyone was like, how did he do it? And people said he forced it into a position from which it could not recover. I'm like, you just said the most basic thing. Yeah. <laughs> so how every chess, <laughs> yeah, every chess well, game every is chess won? Game he yeah. won the game. That's yeah. all that means. He be- So wait, he beat it? I think I remember that he beat one of them, one of the computer programs, Kasparov. Yeah. Kasparov is considered the greatest chess player ever. Oh, really? I thought it was Magnus. Magnus is number one now. Magnus famously tied Kasparov when he was like 12. I thought it was Jesus. the black guy with the flat brim at Washington Square West. <laughs> He's pretty good. He's three. Um, I was trying to do a bit about that for a while and it never worked. What, what, what did you... Just uh, about dudes like bundling up in their house to be like, I got to go play chess in the park. <laughs> <laughs> like putting on like a scarf and mittens. Uh, mittens without the fingertips. Yeah, fingerless gloves. Fingerless yeah. gloves. <laughs> like the sticky bandits yeah. just going out every day like, hey, bu- babe, I might be late tonight. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I was trying to talk about how it's funny that it's a chess is still an out- outside sport <laughs> and it could very easily be an indoor sport. Yeah. That you're just running up on people to play them one on one. Yeah. Like it's a, it really is like a debate me type of situation. Yeah. Just random guys just like fucking play me then. Yeah. If you think you're so good. And then there's always like uh, like blonde girls going up and like filming themselves being like, he didn't know I was good at chess. Yeah, he thought I was a dumb blonde. <laughs> oh, he thought I was a dumb slut. Guess what? <laughs> I'm a dumb slut who knows chess. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm a dumb slut with a camera crew who knows chess. Who are those girls that came in here and played chess? And they like beat everybody. Alex and everyone and was Sophia. like, I can't believe how good they were. And I was like, well, no one here is good at chess. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> they would have had to play chess like Wait, how five they, times before coming here. They just beat Marty. What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> Lenny Balls gets absolutely <laughs> dominated in chess by two girls. I can, move, I, can, <laughs> I can move my horse over Tonight these on Rumble. roller ones, right? <laughs> yeah, Tonight on Rumble. <laughs> Tonight exclusively on Rumble at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Then the girls would have to like unmask themselves as men. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. A woman could never beat a man at chess. We, we thought these were two dumb sluts, but it was Lex Friedman yeah. and Magnus Carlson. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Just white chicks. <laughs> yeah, watch Lex yeah. Friedman and Magnus Carlson dress up as dumb sluts and beat the bar stool office. <laughs> Bro, this would actually go dumb on Rumble. <laughs> no, I think those two girls were actually like, they're supposed to be like some of the best chess players in the world. Who are they? I don't know. But it's funny to think. I think like Robbie had them in or something. Huh. Why Like why would we, why would anyone in here think that they could beat anybody at chess? I don't know. Wasn't there like three weeks where people were playing chess? I play a lot of chess. In the office though? I was playing with Stephen Che play, for yeah, a while. You playing Stephen are, you on, uh, you know, Rudy? are you on chess.com? Yeah. What's your level? I, I always delete it because I get addicted. And then I have to delete the app and then I have to start back and you always start back at a thousand. I, I actually didn't even, I never even considered that you play chess because I just downloaded it a couple weeks ago. Oh, we should play. No, you would smoke me. I'm terrible. But what's, what was your level? Probably got to like, I don't know, nothing, nothing crazy. Maybe, maybe 1300. Oh, dude, that's great. Oh, really? I'm at 110. But you started a thousand. Mm, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I've, I've barely played chess. So I'm like, can you, do you, uh. Can you recognize other people's uh, like Blunders. technique or, or or like oh like ah oh, Mendelssohn? When you play, like I when just play those. Like, I play those like ten minute games, and they it's it's very different from playing on a board because you play so fast and you don't care if you lose. People resign quickly. Yeah, the first game I played, I played with a dude from fucking I forget like Brazil or some shit, and I made my first move, and then he messaged me and said, "You are trash." <laughs> I was like, shit, dude. It was my first game on. It's the game within the game, though. Yeah. It's not like Fortnite. Even though there was a messaging option. They need to pair you up with other novices instead of fucking just yeah. throwing you into fucking Twisted Towers off rip. Do you ever get paired with any hot girls? 
I don't so know. So I've gotten paired with like a lot of very attractive girls from like Ukraine. On chess.com? On chess.com. What do you have pictures of them? They have pictures of themselves. Mine's just a blank profile photo. It's probably just dudes catfishing. Probably. It definitely is. That's so funny to be catfishing on chess.com. You should have told that guy from Brazil. Remember when you guys lost to Germany 7 0 yeah. two World Cups ago? Yeah. That was oh, funny. that would fucking kill him. Yeah. That almost he would broke the country. Kill yeah. Word has it that human trafficking skyrocketed in Brazil <laughs> after that. Do you guys remember when uh, the Ukraine shit at first started? Yeah, and I was like, playing video games. <laughs> but like people from <laughs> Ukraine. <laughs> I remember I was in the middle of a war zone game and then I got off war zone and there was videos on Twitter of them bombing U Ukraine. <laughs> but do you remember like in the in like the one or two weeks afterwards, people from Ukraine were like uh, like trying to get like vacant rooms in like people's houses and shit like that? No. They're like trying to move. My my wife was like talking to a woman. Oh, I remember you telling me about that. There was like a Ukrainian woman who like was going to bring her fucking daughter to like a, and her to live with us because my wife, wife felt bad. Adopted Ukrainian? The, but like they were already in the United States. Yeah. It's not like they had got over oh, right wait, away. What? That makes no <laughs> That's sense. That's what I mean. Like Bro. they were just, pre they were preying on the fact that there was like this sentiment of Ukrainian sympathy yeah. that they, they could just like be like, I'm Ukrainian. Like, can I like. Dude, do you know that barber shop near us yes, in Dumbo? Where everyone is I, Russian and they pretend to be Ukrainian. Have I told you this story? I went No, to, because the same, or maybe we talked about it offline. I went to get my hair cut there and my barber was like, you know, speaking in an accent and he was really hinting that he wanted me to ask where he was from. He was like, he kept Just being like, Just got here. Yeah, so, sorry for my English. He's, I'm not, not new. So I am new, you know? And I'm like, oh, where are you from? And he goes, Ukraine. <laughs> and I was like, wow, uh, you know, I'm so sorry for everything that's happening. And he was like, I, I just got out. I only work for tips. Yeah. And then I looked at him and he was like pretty buff and he had like arm tattoos. I know exactly the guy you're talking about. He was like 25. About. He ran the same game on and me. And I was like, dude, you fucking coward. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Why did you leave? If you're saying is what you're saying, is, you should be fighting. Trade those fucking scissors in for an AK. Yeah, yeah. for a knife. Split the scissors up. And Why get are them. you? Yeah. Why are you here? You abandoned your countrymen. You shouldn't be. My family's still there, but yeah. I get them a better life by you're, working at the barber shop. You're, you're cutting like thirty four dollar fades in like residential Brooklyn. Yeah, that's so funny. You should be on the front load lines defending Kiev. Yeah, he is burly as hell. He's huge. Yeah, that. Guys, jacked as shit. Russia wanted the food. I well, rather I, give I it just, to my friend. I didn't tip him because I thought he was such a pussy. <laughs> no. You didn't tip? No. Dude. You should, I wanted to teach him a lesson. Not he tipping to, at a barber shop is like an intimate experience to not tip in. Just give him a note and be like, "You should go back home and fight." Yeah, your country needs. Well, you. he was like, "You can use my Venmo. It's up at the register." And I was like, "Okay." And then I just sent money to the International Monetary Fund instead. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, "I think they'll know how to get this to the right hands." Yeah. For flak jackets, you know who still needs money? Haiti, bro. We gotta oh, get man. It. We are the world. Uh, what was that song they put out when the Haiti shit happened? <laughs> we are the world. Yeah. Oh, they remixed we are the was world. Was that for Haiti? They did it for. There was the original one, and then they did a remix for Haiti. Yeah. Remember they did one for nine eleven? Oh, that must have been what it was. But they did a new one, and like Lil Wayne was in it and shit. They yeah, always gather so many. Yeah, I remember, dude. I like had that, that downloaded on my iPod. And I would like listen to it and watch the video and be like, this is so sick, dude. Uh, Lil Wayne's <laughs> Lil Wayne's the fucking best. You buy the song, but don't donate to Haiti. <laughs> no, I bought the song. Like I had it. That's on what my I phone. mean. Yeah. Like you, you, you paid money to Lil Wayne, but yeah. not to Haiti. I had the song and the music video. Because there used to be a number you could text where it was like well, 1211, like donates $50 to ha Haiti. Yeah. You could like grab someone else's phone, text that number, and then they would just have also donated to Haiti. What happened? It, it, it was an earthquake? Yeah, some shit like that. Was there another one recently? No, this is like- A while ago. In like 2012. Devastating. But it was like, uh, I think someone someone stole a bunch of the money. Oh, obviously. I'm going to put small on one of the, Yeah, was it Wyclef well, or Wyclef, Akon or no, someone? Someone like stole a bunch of the, like someone famous stole a bunch of the Haiti money. Wyclef ran for president of Haiti. Did and he? Should have won. The whole country apparently wanted him to win. But, but he didn't win. I think he, I think he, something was like he, he, he was ineligible because he hadn't lived there in too long. Damn. Yeah, they could use any of the help they could get. Yeah. I think it's nasty down in Haiti. Man, Wyclef, what a, what an artist he is, though. Yeah. 
Lauren, Lauren Hill too. That's, that's hilarious. That's crazy to steal money from Haiti. <laughs> to be like in Haiti running yeah. for president, being like, dude, I need this more than you. Yeah. Someone's like sleeping in a box. Yeah. Or like under rubble. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're burying themselves in rubble every night to get warm yeah they're pulling up the rubble yeah. <laughs> like getting snug in the rubble yeah they're That's using so their nasty. fucking bedroom wall as a blanket <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> they're curling up in their roof and Wyclef is fucking <laughs> just stealing their money yeah he just has he has his like American recording money but he's also taking the yeah he has all of Lauren Hill's entire catalog of money Trump should have gone down there and started throwing them brooms yeah. <laughs> remember, when the, remember when that shit happened Throwing in Puerto Throwing robotic Rico? vacuum cleaners? Yeah. Remember you when that shit happened in, in Puerto Rico? Rico and, Make sure and you tuck that, your balls in. <laughs> that video of Trump taking the- That's yeah. the best thing ever. The, the, Throwing the, paper towels the, the fade away him. paper towels. Their entire fucking- Puerto Rico. <laughs> country was underwater. <laughs> He's just- yeah. <laughs> throwing them rolls of paper towels. He's back. I mean, hey, uh, one New Hampshire. You we're going to be. The, you just said the odds. What are the odds? He's he's what minus minus one ten right now. But they fluctuate a lot. But he's I would minus, I would put a, the fucking house on it. The implied odds are fifty two and a half percent for him, thirty five percent for Biden. Uh, third is Michelle Obama, which means people <laughs> think Biden's going to die. <laughs> Uh, That's and like what my mom. My mom votes for people who are not even like close to being in the race. Yeah, and then she's like, "Well, I didn't want to vote for the other ones." And I'm yeah, like, but well, you may as well just not vote it. People forget how much <laughs> people forget how much these races change. Yeah, they really yeah. do. I mean, things can happen out of nowhere. I mean, people forget like uh, Hillary Clinton beat Obama in New Ham in the New Hampshire primary uh, in 2000. Yeah, 2008. Excuse me. Um, and it was thought that she was going to win that Democratic. That's got to suck nomination. to be like someone who was so close to being president multiple times and just like, that's like your whole life's work just never happened. She was it's still like, secretary of state and senator from New York. Yeah, that is But I know shit. she does probably view her life as a colossal yeah, failure. Yeah, failure. Yeah. Yeah, just because like she had a couple trips to Epstein's Island. Yeah. Just because she drank. Your husband goes on a boy's trip once or twice and now your entire <laughs> political career is over. <laughs> <laughs> Boy shrimp. <Yeah. laughs> Just get on the fucking plane. Yeah. <laughs> oh my no god. No different than us like going to fucking Vegas or some shit. Just a rowdy weekend. Yeah. Like uh, the hangover. Bro, and they're what like, happened what did last I night? do? Yeah. <laughs> oh no. Dude, you fucked a kid last night. <laughs> what? No. Really? <laughs> Are you That's fucking funny. kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you made some little people you, do yeah. fucking. <laughs> Yeah. Math on a chalkboard. <laughs> that would be a great hangover four. <laughs> hangover four, little St. James. Yeah. And then they find the camera at the end. You know how they always find <laughs> yeah. the camera at the After end of the this, hangover? We're burn yeah. these pictures. All right, let's watch these. Let's look at these pictures. And then One last time. You know, I think we have to like hand these over to the government or some shit. What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> these are like way worse than I imagined them being. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's how it all got out. <laughs> yeah. Just because Ed Helms was like, <laughs> I put my tooth up. A <laughs> Did you know that Paul Rudd was. Uh, in the running for that for the Hangover, and I think he passed on it. Real? Oh, that's not like, the Bradley see him being Cooper character. That. He was going to play Bradley Cooper's character. Damn, Paul Rudd's the best. Yeah, I think that he could have played that other character that 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 one dude who's not famous of the four of them. Yeah, who looks he who, has the same haircut as Paul Rudd. Doug? Yeah, who is Paul yeah. Rudd? Doug. Yeah, Doug. He could, yeah, he looks like Doug, but he was in the running to play uh, the, the Bradley Cooper, the lead. I guess they wouldn't probably cast Paul Rudd as Doug. That guy, Doug, never. He's not got a prominent he doesn't have a role really no he's just lost yeah he's a good he's good at being sunburned at the end he doesn't True. really get any laughs he's no. a straight man no i guess cooper gets some does he get a lot of laughs i yeah. remember reading mike tyson's autobiography which was ridiculous um because he didn't i don't think he got a ghostwriter to help him with it and it's i'm gonna do this <laughs> shit myself he talks about like his rape trial oh yeah and he's that's like never this good bitch idea. was lying through her fucking teeth <laughs> and it's like <laughs> are you allowed to talk about this like that dude I don't know. easy you're putting that in print there's like exclamation points <laughs> he's yelling it through the page like owen meanie anyway <laughs> his lawyers insane. are like you might want to mix it in allegedly dude, that's I'm not, crazy i'm not making this up <laughs> 
that. He's like, there was so much evidence that they left out. I'm like, dude, let it, you know, go. We, we, anyway, but he, he talks about his like transitioning into his acting career. And at the time of the writing of this book, he had only been in the hangover. Yeah. And he's like, none of us had any idea how much of a success this movie would become. I'm like, dude, you were yourself for four minutes of the movie. <laughs> and he's like, we the cast. I remember our reunion. Like, we'd get together and be like, can you believe it? I'm like, <laughs> if he just also, they were all like incredibly established actors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude. Who thought that movie was going to be like a dud? Yeah, but I just, I mean, it, I don't know. It, not to, to his credit, he was like fine. But then, then he's like, uh, I remember him talking about coming back for like Hangover Two for which he was just the musical act at the end at the yeah, wedding. Yeah, 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 at the wedding. He sings or whatever. Yeah. But he, picturing him as like a, a leading member of like SAG is hilarious. Yeah, exactly. We need to get better rates. <laughs> they're they're, they're t- completely <laughs> raping us on these rates. One of like my favorite bits ever is the Tom Segura bit where he's talking about meeting uh, Mike Tyson on the plane. Oh, yeah, in, in uh, on his way to Pittsburgh. Yeah. Because he's going to do the improv, which yeah. is where you will be this weekend. This weekend, yeah. And you Pittsburgh need help improv. on your tickets. Yes. Holy fuck. That's so, that bit is so, I remember listening to that when I was a kid and being like, this is unbelievable. Why don't you do yeah, the bit? Yeah, funny. I don't really remember it. I just remember, I just remember Mike Tyson coming up to him and being like, I've seen you on TV. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Netflix. I saw you on Netflix. Didn't he, doesn't he come and he shows up and just like comes into the green room? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And he threatens to fight someone on the plane or something like that. I don't think he threatens to fight anybody. I think, oh, I think he's sitting down on the plane and then the w- the flight attendant comes up and he's like, Mike Tyson wants to speak to you. Oh, yeah, and he yeah, has yeah, to yeah, get yeah. up and go find Mike Tyson in first class. <laughs> <laughs> Which I bet was hard. Yeah, probably pretty easy to spot him. <laughs> Just hanging out of the fucking... Isn't there first like a video seat. of Mike Tyson like about to fight someone in like first class or something like that? Oh yeah, there that is. That was very recent. I think he did fight someone. Yeah, yeah he did. I don't want to do this. I can't stop stroking this. Couch. I was doing that when we were recording it's on Monday. So nice. Yeah. I like when you can make like a little drawing in it. Yeah. No, you can't. Or you you kind of can. can. You have to go a certain direction though. Yeah, you got to find the direction. Go against the grain. And then you write your name. And then you wipe and then it you away like a it. fucking etch a sketch. Yeah. Yeah, you write a nice slur on the couch and then yeah. erase it. <laughs> Dude, there was like a massive scandal at my school because someone wrote like a put like a swastika in like condensation somewhere. A big deal. I feel like if I was the teacher in that situation, I would probably just like, Yeah. Just like, let's not fucking <laughs> deal with this shit right now. Let's not be on the news this week for this. Yeah, like reporting it, like you ha- people have to see that. Yeah, people just want to be a fucking hero. Well, that's uh, son of a boy, Dad. Yeah, thank you guys for listening. Um, uh, yeah, I'm gonna way, be in I Pittsburgh throw that this out weekend. there, but I don't actually mean that it's over. It's not oh, my I think we call. were getting to a point when you guys were when we were talking about drawing on the couch. We're, we're kind of getting towards wraps. I mean, I was having a good time. I'm surprised you're calling it so early. It's we've been over we were over an hour, hour ten. All right, fine. People aren't going to be happy. But yeah, asked. thank you guys for listening. I'm going to be in Pittsburgh this weekend. Pittsburgh Improv tickets at LilSasquatchWebsite.com. Please come see me. Come see us in Denver, February 9th to the 11th, and then Albany the following weekend. Tickets are actually kind of they're slim. They're kind slim. of uh, not many left for for either of those. So tickets at FrancisEllis.com or Little Sasquatch website. I will be walking my dog this weekend. Ron's gonna be walking his dog. Come say hi. Come say what's up. I'll be walking my dog in Brooklyn. Hell Thank yeah. you for listening. Goodbye. Hey.